Hi everyone. A lot of times people ask me in the comments how to get started with math. They are new to math, they haven't had math in 10, 15, 20 years, and they want to know what's a good way to pick it back up. Well, I'm a big fan of videos, but at the same time, I'm a bigger fan of actual books. And so in this video, I want to go over a book that is widely used today and that you can get for just a few dollars. This is an older edition, the second edition. And you can use it to teach yourself uh, basic algebra, or actually, college algebra is the name of the book. And the author is Blitzer. This is actually the book that I use to teach college algebra in college, except I use a newer edition. But you can get this book used on the internet, just any edition, for just, just a few dollars. I mean, for just a few bucks, uh, probably less than 10, you can get a book that will help you understand, you know, the basics of algebra. Here's the inside cover, College Algebra Essentials, second edition by Robert Blitzer, Miami Dade College. Good stuff. So this is the table of contents. It talks about the prereqs you need. So if you know pretty much zero math, it will help you, you know, get started. So it's a really good book uh, for beginners. And it talks about equations and inequalities. Chapter two is on functions and graphs. The book does a lot with graphing and interpreting graphs, which is really, really important even for higher level mathematics. It talks about inverse functions. Chapter three is on polynomials. It talks about the rational roots theorem. It talks about the behavior of polynomial functions and stuff like that. I've read pretty much this entire book since I, I use it to teach. I've done almost all the problems in the book. Um, it's a pretty solid book. Chapter four is one of the hardest parts of the course for people. It's on exponential and logarithmic functions. It's got some nice problems in, this, in that chapter. Then it goes on to system of equations and inequalities. Six is on matrices and determinants. Seven is on conic sections. And the last chapter is on sequences, induction, and probability. Let's take a look further inside this book. So here's an example in chapter two. It says, using the definition of slope. So it clearly shows you all of the steps and it explains everything very, very thoroughly. This is the kind of book that someone who is coming back to math after a long break or someone who just wants to learn some algebra and they don't know algebra, could use to actually learn. You know, there's a reason that this book is still being used today at colleges and universities all over the world. It's because it's so good. <laughs> I mean, it really does explain things uh, very, very well. Here's an example from the section on prereqs. The question is asking, you know, what numbers to exclude from the domain. And so basically it's got like a little arrow in a box and it points to the denominator and says the denominator would uh, equal zero if x equals two. So that's what you exclude from the domain. So the domain of the function in part a is all numbers except two. So it clearly goes through everything uh, and really tries to highlight it uh, in a nice way. You know, drawing little boxes in blue, that's not something you see in, you know, more advanced books. So it's really a good book to help teach you the basics so you can learn on your own. Here's another example, and you can see that the authors clearly justify every step. On the side, you see the remarks in blue. So it's really, really good for beginners. You know, if you take the time and, and go through this, you can learn a lot of math. And, you know, maybe some people are thinking, hey, it's really basic algebra. I already know this. You know, that's fine. Even if you already know this stuff, there's another way you can use this book. Let me, let me show you how. So if you feel that you already know most of this stuff and you just want to refresh your skills, Instead of reading the book, you can use the book as a source of problems. This book has tons of practice problems, and it has answers to all of the odd problems uh, in the back of the book. It's a really, really, really good source of math problems. This is the section on partial fractions. So partial fractions are used in calculus uh, for integration and also in differential equations when you're trying to find um, Laplace transforms. So even though it's just basic algebra, you use this stuff in higher level math. It is extremely important. This is one of my favorite uh, sections in the book. It's a section that talks about the 
rational zeros theorem. In fact, the whole chapter on polynomials, I think, is, is excellent. Uh, polynomials were used a lot in abstract algebra, which is one of my favorite uh, subjects in math, so I'm a little bit biased, and I love chapter 3. The book does a really good job in all of chapter 3, explaining all of the concepts uh, in a very nice way. So this is the back of the book, so you can see that it actually does have answers to all of the odd problems. So really, really useful for self-study. And again, you can get this for, for just a few dollars. A lot of people uh, would recommend videos instead of uh, a book. And you know, I make math videos, I have a math channel, so I should be promoting videos too. However, I think books are better. Um, you can read a book at your own pace, and oftentimes that pace is faster than the video. You can read the book faster than you can watch an entire video. Ideally, you can work out the problems faster than the videos do. So a book, I think, is a faster way to, to learn math. This is going to seem like a strange comment, but another bonus of this book is the way it lays flat. You know, you can, you can open the book, and you can lay it flat, and you can sit down with a piece of paper, and you can work out the problems, and you can read the book at the same time. It just, it's the right size for a math book to work from. A lot of times people will ask me, hey, what's a good algebra workbook? And by that, I guess they mean a book that has, you know, problems that you can work through. I think this is better than just that, because this is an actual college-level textbook, and it has hundreds or thousands, actually, of exercises, and Thousands of them have solutions. I mean, they're all in, in the back of the book. I mean, there must be over a thousand problems easy uh, in this book. In fact, this is 2.1, and let's look to see how many problems are in this section. I mean, this is just ridiculous. We're already at 92. Let's see here, 120. There's 120 exercises in, no, 124 exercises in section 2.1. That's just a section, that's not even the whole chapter. So. I think this is better than, you know, these so-called algebra workbooks. It's an actual textbook that has explanations, definitions, correct mathematical statements, as well as exercises uh, with solutions. It's a really, really good book for people who want to learn on their own. This college algebra book has plenty of applications, too. So if you're looking for, like, applications of basic math, you'll find them in this book. Uh, most of the sections contain tons of word problems. Now. Most people don't like word problems, but if you're looking for applications and you're looking for word problems, you will definitely find them in this book. There's entire sections in this book uh, devoted to word problems. Let me show you. So this is the exercise set for 1.3, which is a section on word problems. I mean, the entire section is just on applications of mathematics. Now, most of the word problems you know, follow a very similar pattern. So there's different types of word problems. So once you learn how to do all of the different types, in theory, you can do uh, all of them. I tend to notice that because I teach the class, and there's typically a pattern to the word problems. Like there's the problems with interest. You know, there's the problems where you have two quantities and you want to set them equal. Uh, you know, all kinds of different types of word problems. I'm just going slow so you can see how vast the amount of problems actually are. I mean, there are just so many word problems uh, in this book. Really, really nice stuff. So again, if you're looking for a book to sharpen your algebra skills, or maybe just pick up some math because you've never really learned it uh, all that well, uh, this is a really good choice. College algebra is an extremely important course, and it's very, very helpful to be really good at algebra before you jump into calculus. I actually have a course on algebra, and I will leave a link in the description. It's a course on Udemy. I usually don't, like, you know, pump my courses on YouTube, but in this case, I feel that, you know, the course I have, you know, does follow this book really, really well. It's a, it's a full course with actual assignments, and it has solutions, and this is a good companion book for that course. So if you're trying to get into math, uh, check that out. And if you don't get the course, that's fine. Maybe just pick this book up. It's only a few dollars, and so is the course, actually, so... Anyways, I wanted to make this video because a lot of people have been asking, you know, what's a, what's a really good book for algebra? And it's been a long time coming. And so I finally made the video, and hopefully this video helps someone out there. And it helps someone actually learn some math, you know. So good luck.